Hello and welcome to the Pro Tips of Football show. Liverpool have splashed the cash in a post-Christmas panic when they didn't get what they wanted off Santa. It's as you were with Manchester City. We're still winning relentlessly and Mourinho is complaining and not having enough money in a vain attempt to deflect attention to Manchester United drawing 2-2 with Burnley at home. We've got some great Premier League and Italian Serie A matches to talk about. Joining me here for the last Pro Tips to Football show of 2017, we have Pro Tips to Martin and Pro Tips to Dan. How are you, Martin? Yeah, good, thanks. I've put on far too much weight over the last week or so. so. <laughs> Dan, yeah, how's good. it going? Uh, not too bad. Also, um, eating too much. Food coma. You've lost weight, though, with the beard going. Yeah, you've lost a few pounds with that. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell anyone I was going to do a big reveal on video and you blew it. Well, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> but it's all, you posted pictures everywhere. I mean, for a big reveal for, like, everyone in, in Pro Tips land, not, not like the office crew. I'm sorry, man. Spoiler, sorry. Um, look, before we get into the football, and just a reminder, um, you can listen to the Pro Tips of Football show on iTunes, Android Podcatchers, YouTube, and the Pro Tips to Blog as well. If you'd like to get in touch with us uh, any time at all, not just for the podcast, um, and ask us some uh, uh, betting questions, the best way of getting us is going to Facebook and looking for Pro Tips or UK. And if you have some questions, you'd like read out on the podcast you can get me on Twitter Pro Tips for Pod or through the uh, Facebook uh, page as well right lads on to the football so uh, we're going to have a look at a couple of Premier League matches a couple of Championship matches and there's two Syria and maybe even a Scottish match as well um, so first up is Chelsea and Stoke could this be Mark Hughes' last match Dan what are your thoughts on this match Um. so it, 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 it really could be Mark Hughes' last match. Uh, Stoke have won twice in the last ten. Uh, they've had three Premier League away wins in all the 2017s, three 19 games. And they're playing Chelsea side have lost once in 12, won the last six in a row in Stamford Bridge. And the thing is, Stam- uh, Chelsea are kind of like, they're not smashing teams in the same way that Man City are. They're just grinding out one and two no wins. Um, a little start picked up is that Chelsea have not won by more than two goals at home since May in the Premier League, which is ten games. Wow. Um, but the last six wins at the Stamford Bridge, uh, they've won three by two goals and three by one. And the line's actually at two, 2.25. So I was thinking about it. So I was thinking, is this, does this mean I should back Stoke plus two? I think it should. Because um, I, I genuinely think Chelsea don't really smash the teams. Uh, that's food for talk. What, what, what do you make of Martin? <laughs> yeah, I agree with what Dan's saying there. Um, he's right. Yeah, Chelsea just don't seem to seem to grind out the wins, but don't seem to smash the teams at the minute. However, you know, just looking at the historic stats with Chelsea and Stoke, 25 from 27 points at home against Stoke in the Prem, 1-8 draw 1. Um, they just seem to enjoy playing them. Um, Stoke just don't like going to London. Uh, no wins in the last 17 trips to London. Um, there'll be rotation because, you know, Christmas period and that. Uh, I, Chelsea Chelsea can still field a decent side. They'll bring in, like, you know, the likes of Willian, quite possibly, who, who likes scoring against Stoke City scored. He's actually scored four uh, against Stoke more than any other opponent he's played against. So I can see him starting and doing well. And I also agree that Mark Hughes is he's, he's on borrowed time. He, I know they've got twenty points now and they're, they're they're about three points or so away from the relegation zone. But if they get battered here, then it could be bye bye Mark Hughes. I know we said that a couple of weeks ago, and he managed to pull out a win. I think it was against Watford or something like that a couple of weeks ago. But um, they just they just don't excite me anymore, Stoke City. And I think personally, I've I don't see much value in this game at all. However, although Chelsea don't seem to batter teams, they do like playing Stoke. So. If I was going to go for anything, I might go for the over three and a half at 2.07. Aha. Uh-huh. Nice. Um, what do you make of this, uh, Mara's Chelsea thing? Is it, is it, is it, is it real? Is it fake? What, what do you I think? I don't know. I thought, it's, it could be fake. I mean, like, we were chatting earlier and it's so easy to fake things like that, isn't it? So, it'll be interesting to see if Mara's, plays, mm. because obviously with the Virgil van Dijk thing, there was rumours going around, and he didn't play for a couple of games, and then obviously he made his transfer to Liverpool. 
people. So if more is he left out of the team, then you could sense that it could be happening. Yeah, because there was stuff like in, in August that he had signed and then he didn't end up moving for some reason. So I don't know, it's hard to call. I think it's probably fake as well because there's only, um, there's only one photo of it going, there was only one screenshot, you know what I mean? no one else except the the original person took this screenshot. So usually yeah. with stuff like this, there there would be more than than one, uh, would be more than one uh, screenshot. So that's sure. why I'm suspicious of it. But saying that, I'd really like to see Mara as a Chelsea. I think he'd be, I think he'd be brilliant. You know, I think he'd be class. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he's what Chelsea need though. I mean, like, how's the, how's the likes of Pedro and William going to feel about about that if he does so? Yeah, I'm going to agree. I, I don't. I don't think Maris is the kind of player they need. They need um, someone who's back up for Morata more. Yeah, an out and out striker. Yeah, you know, they'd be better off with Vardy. Yeah, good show. Uh, maybe so. Yeah, better off with Vardy. Yeah. But surely then it would, I mean, you know, they'd be able to get rid of Pedro because he's not playing enough for me anyway. Uh, and William, I don't know, like, you could probably cash in on William, sell him off to someone in Italy, cash in now because he's still young. Maybe, I, I don't know. You know? Uh, anyway, right, let's move on to, uh, fourth place. Liverpool are taking on eighth placed, uh, Leicester. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, Martin, what do you think of this match? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one to call. Liverpool are scoring for fun and obviously bad Swansea 5-0, but that was Swansea. And Leicester have, have picked up a little bit. Um, where they're eighth in the league now, so they're doing all right. And I, I actually think there's value in Leicester on the handicap at 1.5, uh, on the Asian handicap, they're 2.04. I think Liverpool will probably scrape past Leicester, but I can't see them I can't see them battering Leicester because I think, well, with this Morris situation, if it's fake or not, if Morris plays and Vardy, Vardy plays with Okazaki, then, you know, they can certainly cause the Liverpool defence problems. And don't forget, they beat him in the cup as well, mm-hmm. um, earlier in the season. And they did lose 3 2 in the reverse fixture in the league, but again, that was a close one. Um, it's all about these kind of games, it's all about the rotation and the strength in depth. You know, you, you expect Mane and Joe Gomez probably to, to start the game, because they didn't, didn't start on uh, Boxing Day. And then, like I say, Okazaki coming in and playing for Leicester, so. I, I just, yeah, I can see Liverpool scraping a win, but although Leicester aren't in the best of form, they have only lost, you know, one game in the last eight away. Um, so I think there's value there in the plus 1.5 Asian handicap. Cool. That's what I'm going for. Uh, what do you think, Dan? Okay, um, I was just, I was just thinking about what you said about Akazaki coming in. I thought he played. He did. He did start. I'm not oh, yeah, going to It'll be, it'll be Gray will come in. Yeah. Um, Demario um, Gray didn't start. <laughs> Julian Gray. Julian Gray, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Not quite, not quite the same, not quite the same sort of skill level. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, there's all this big fuss about Liverpool signing Van Dijk, and I was listening to TalkSport on the way back from uh, my mate's house today. Oh god. And they mentioned <laughs> that Liverpool have got the best home defensive record in the Premier League. I was like, what? Yeah. They pull a crap, you know, crap at the back, and I looked it up and damaged their right. They've only scored, and they've only conceded three at home in the Premier League all season. Huh. I, I was like, oh, oh okay. Um, I mean, Liverpool are unbeaten in 11 Premier League games, won seven, yeah. drawn four. Unbeaten 12 at home, won six, drawn six. So drawn three of their last five at home. Um, Leicester uh, was a bit patchy. Four three three, four wins, three draws, three losses in their last ten games. Uh, they've not won in three. Uh, then Leicester yeah. haven't kept a clean sheet in six games either. And I was kind of looking. I, I'm not really, really torn on this because I was kind of looking at Leicester on the um, a, uh, Leicester as a, a draw or a win, you know. So I, I think Leicester could get something, but. <laughs> When Liverpool get going, it's hard to stop them. As Swansea found out, mm. you know, once once they get one, they get two. That's it. They're just like they're, they're rampant. Um, the, and like you, I looked at the line, the uh, the Asian handicap line that's around one point five, one point seven five. So Liverpool minus one and a half means they get win by two. I kind of see it, but 
I can also see Leicester not losing by two, so I'm a bit torn, and I think I'm going to wait for the uh, lineups in this one. I think I'm going to see who plays, because um, I can't see enough value there at the moment to uh, to make a bet. So. It's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard. I don't know what it is now, but there was some good stat about Firmino as well that you know some people were, people were saying uh, Liverpool's problem is they don't have a proper striker, but Firmino scored just tons of goals. You know, um, I think I think the Swansea game though I was watching it was a bit of a. It's a strange man. It really wasn't a very entertaining match for a lot of goals. It really wasn't. The first half was you know they they scored one. They, had another couple of shots in the second half you know they came out and it, it kind of looked like no one was really bothered and then it was like okay I'm in front of goal so I may as well score it was a strange kind of strange match to, to watch I don't know maybe it's because the atmosphere in the stadium I don't I don't think it's all that good since the new part of the the stadium went up or something mm. it's quiet and a lot of Liverpool fans complain about it I suppose it's, it's Premier League wide that complained there's, there's not as much atmosphere in um in uh, in stadiums, so I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, but um, yeah, oh, oh, you were going to say that, were you? <laughs> Shut up, Paddy, you're rambling. <laughs> no, I was going to say like you know, in, with the big teams, when they play like the top eight teams, the atmosphere is there. But when you're coming up at, at home against teams like Swansea and West Brom, you know, you can be forgiven. Yeah. You know, the fans can be forgiven for not chanting all game. To be fair, mm, I suppose. Look, um, on on Virgil Van Dijk, lads, is he the answer to Liverpool's problems? Uh, certainly help. I mean, I don't know about that fee though. That's ridiculous. But I, I think it will certainly help them. Although Neil Warnock doesn't think so. <laughs> what did he say? What did I, I, I posted it up? Uh, so bad. So bad. Better defender than Virgil van Dijk. Uh, you know, Neil Warnock is like he's like that. You know, spoiled kid in the room who's like, everyone look at me, look at me. I have something to say. I'm important. <laughs> I, I need I, everyone look at me. Shut up, man. You know, it's just yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're doing well, Bacard. If you don't need any more attention, you're grand. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, Swansea there as well. Uh, what do you make of of their new managerial appointment? <laughs> Um, preparing for the championship springs to mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it does. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit baffled by that appointment. I, I would have thought if they were trying to get someone in to, to keep them up, they'd go for someone who has had a bit of Premier League experience. And uh, it's a strange one for me. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what do you think, Dan? You, you, you were singing his praises there a while ago. Well, Carlos Power. Yeah. Um, okay, so again, talking to my mate on the uh, on the drive back, and he had a problem at Sheffield Wednesday, um, controlling some of the more feisty characters in the dressing room, players like Fernando Forestieri, and now he's going to go to the, the Premier League where they're feistier, and they're, they think more of themselves. I think, I'm with mine, I think this is like preparing for life in the Championship, I don't think it's a great point at all. I mean, yeah, maybe you'll prove me wrong, but I, you, you look at how many strikers he had at Sheffield Wednesday, and yet they weren't winning enough games. Now he's going to a team that can't score. I don't know. Um, I'm not convinced. He ruined Jordan Rhodes as well, really, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, though, why, why they didn't give a uh, man Britain a bit of a longer, a longer go at it. Because uh, <laughs> he got... Sp- Thanks, 5-0 by Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, yeah. All right, fair enough. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Uh, right, let's move on then to second place. Man United are taking on 14th place uh, Southampton so yeah poor El Mourinho had his moan about the money but then it was he was quickly caught out on it uh, everyone quickly proved that, <laughs> that Gabriel Jesus was was cheaper than Luke Shaw and uh, and Fabian Delph was a lot cheaper than uh, he was like nine million or something. So, mm. it, but it's 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 typical Mourinho, you know, isn't it? He he wants to deflect away from a bad result and get people talking about his off-field shenanigans instead of of Man United's on-field shenanigans. But you know, in fairness, lads, I, you know, I was watching it and I thought, like, Man United, they definitely deserved the, the draw, but they wouldn't have deserved to win it. Burnley played really, really well, especially in the first half. You know, uh, Dan, what do you think of this match? Um, I, I agree with you. I, I, um, in that, I think Mourinho is deflecting 
And I agree with you that they probably deserve some that early match with them. They played really well. 2-2 may be a fair reflection. Um, I was actually talking to a Man U fan. Um, he messaged me because um, a while back he asked me to write about, uh, about Jesse Lingard. And I said, oh, yeah, he was, he was all right on loan for us, but he, he faded. And I said, I don't think he's quite got enough to do it at, at Man U. And, of course, now he is. And he said, like, we do, we're, we're revisiting, what, you know, what, what do you think now? And I was like, well, I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm quite surprised he's done so well. And I think the, um, the run of games he's had and the confidence he's got from scoring goals has just made him a better player. And I think Mourinho, like, he talks about, um, how much money Man U has spent making out that they're the poor relations, but <laughs> it, it's all crap. It's, it's all crap. And, I think Man you need to look at maybe it's not the transfer policies. The problem is it's that they're not bringing in the right players and they're not playing them enough. Yeah, like they're yeah. bringing players like Mkhitaryan and they're already bombing him out. Luke Shaw got in and now he's being bombed out. They, you know, they, they brought in like a ton of left backs. The, the, the recruitment policy has not been great for a while. And I think yeah. it's coming home to roost a little bit. Um, in context of this game, I think Man will do well. Uh, basically because Southampton are on the slide. Um, listen to Southampton fans calling talk sport. They're all convinced they're going down. Um, so the manager hasn't got a clue. Uh, they can't. See. You look at their forward line. You've got Charlie Austin, who's not really scoring goals. You've got uh, Manolo Gabbiadini, who's not been the same since the league of fight, well, since he got injured. Yeah. And then you've got um, Shane Long, who uh, I can't remember the last time Shane Long scored. I've actually got it written down. <laughs> but first um, four games since Shane Long scored 319 wow. days ago. That's insane. That's more than Lukas Djukovic, and that's saying something. <laughs> yes, he hasn't scored in 28. Um, so the line for this, like, you can get Man U minus one and a half at 2.02, and I think Man U should beat them by two goals. But Southampton, you know, they've, they've got one win in their last, last ten games. Not one away since September, six games. And they're just... They're a team devoid of comf- uh, confidence. I watched a bit the Spurs game, and yeah, you know the, the, they they got a couple of goals, but they got ripped apart. No, they, they, they should not have conceded that many goals. I mean, yeah, okay, Harry Kane is at the moment god, but I don't know. So I'm 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 on the menu. Hope train for this one. Um, yeah, I kind of agree with you, Dan, on that. Um, minus 1.5 or 2.02. I think it's worth having a dabble at that. Because, uh, yeah, like you say, Charlie Austin, well, he's, he's banned slash injured as well. I mean, and he's so, yeah, who are they going to rely on for goals? Um, Harry Kane scored 50 goals for club and country since Shane Long last scored a goal. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Mental. And the worst thing is, um, he, he could have played for Ireland as well, Harry Kane. If only we realised sooner. If only we realised oh, we could have got him. His 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 dad, his <laughs> uncle is Irish, but but they don't talk. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> sure. I'm not, I'm not sure he would have turned into the player that he had if he'd turned that far. <laughs> Probably not. No. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is one where Southampton will, you know, go into the game if they get anything as a bonus, but I can't see them getting anything. You know, they got. They got things to worry about after in the new year. They've got Palace at home next. And then they've got Watford. They're the two huge games. I think they'll go into this and try and contain United, but I think United will be too strong. Um Lukaku does need to sort his life out though, because he's not he's not been doing very well of late. Um but yeah, I think Lingard is coming into form. But like Dan said as well, like the problem United have is that they don't give some certain players enough time, enough run in the team to for them to build their confidence and go on a bit of a hot streak. Like Mkhitaryan, he's unbelievable, but he's just not getting enough of a run. And unfortunately, I can see United getting rid of him. Um, yeah, it's this, it's this, it's this game that Mourinho plays. Like he, 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 we've seen a lot with him uh, doing it with Luke Shaw. He, he, you know, mm. he slates Luke Shaw because he thinks this is the way of, of getting something positive out of Luke Shaw. And and in fairness to him, it 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 looks like it does actually work with Shaw. But I was watching them. Uh, it was the match Mkhitaryan came back for uh, the cup match against Bristol, wasn't? Is was that one, wasn't it? And. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Mkhitaryan played, I, I really like him, I'm a huge fan of him, like, I used to watch yeah. a lot of him at Dortmund as well, and he was playing, like, really, really aggressively, he was giving out a lot, he was getting, in, you know, he was getting, having, a, having words with the ref a lot, and something that he never really did at, um, 
uh, at Dortmund. So he came out really fired up for the match and making sure he, he that he was showing this aggression that Mourinho wanted. And like I was thinking about this as well today. So he, he Mourinho wants him to be more aggressive. We saw that Pub Pogba has been getting in trouble and nearly got in trouble in that match yeah. as well. So this is obviously something Mourinho is saying to him. He's like, lads, you need to show more cojones here. You got to be more aggressive, more kind of dirty. And uh, I don't think it suits these players. Do you know? Like, it suits someone like Marcus Rojo, because he's like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. you, you, you get no, me. But, but Mikitarian's, I mean, Mikitarian's a kind of slight fella. You, you, you know, you'd say boo to him, he'd fall over. <laughs> There's no need for him to be aggressive. It's like, it's like Juan Mata. Juan Mata can't be aggressive. <laughs> if Juan Mata tried to start a fight with you, you'd just be like, get, get the hell out of here, man. What are you doing? So, <laughs> it's, it's a strange thing, um, to see them doing it. And, and I don't think it'll work. Um, I don't think that 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 kind of psychology will work on Mikatari, and then they're, they're going to get rid of him. They wanted to. Uh, I was reading today some rumor, some newspaper had that um, they want to offer uh, Mikatarian and seventy million to uh, Juventus for DiBala. So, oh wow! Yeah, I, I don't know though. Uh, it wasn't exactly from a reputable um, newspaper. Just just looking at the other side of the corner at Southampton, I was just reading through a Southampton message board. Yeah. And, um, current, um, uh, the, the, there's a bit of a sweepstake on when, uh, Pellegrino will go. <laughs> and, um, the current people that, um, Saints fans would prefer instead of him for the Man U game are an, uh, an AI, a pot plant. <laughs> uh, this is how much they rate Pellegrino. Like someone's actually made a case of why a pot plant would do a better job <laughs> for the Man U game than Maurizio Pellegrino. <laughs> wow. That's this brilliant. is how popular he, um, he is in Southampton right now. <laughs> that's class. <laughs> See, that, that, I don't know who they're going to get in, but that 75 mil has got to be pumped straight back into the team in January, and they've got to do something. Um, well, I, I was, the Saints fans on TalkSport were all saying, oh, everyone knows we've got money now, so we're, we're going to be held to ransom. <laughs> The players, and yeah, I kind of get that, but you know, them's the breaks. You, you've got to do the best job you can. And um, a track though, in their position, I don't know. They need they need to pull something out of the bag. Um, I think striker is definitely a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna have a look and see who the Saints fans want. Okay, so um, just having a quick look at their message board, uh, who they want, uh, who they spend the money on to bring in. Number one, Theo Walker. Yeah, I can see that happening. Um, yeah, I mean, is, is he the right kind of player for him? Probably not. Um, I think they need an out and out striker rather than someone yeah. like him, but. I assume one of the suggestions. Uh, they're actually saying that the problem is that they don't think Pellegrino or, uh, Lesbury will, will be able to do that. Mm. Bringing the right players. Um, and then like you say, it's also the, um, it, it's who will come. Who they, will can come. Have, they can have Andy Carroll if they want. <laughs> Mate, I wouldn't take ha- Andy Carroll for us and we're dreadful. <laughs> Maybe Storage. There you are, lads. Take Storage off Liverpool's books because he's not getting the game at Liverpool. <laughs> You know, even Danny Ings, maybe he, maybe he needs to get sent out on loan. Um, did you see what Fellaini said today? Cause Fellaini, what's Fellaini at with this contract thing? He's wanting 170 grand a week or something I'm seeing. Like, how oh, has Fellaini worked that? He said, um, I have a quote here from him. This is, um, a Bleacher Report article. They said, um, uh, Fellaini says, they've labeled me as an aggressive player, a murderer. <laughs> Look, I'm fanatical. The team that wants it, the hardest wins but there have been times when I came out as the villain what should I do if they pull me by the hair it sounds like a joke but it really hurts oh boo hoo Fellaini boo hoo so you're you're a tug because someone pulled your hair you know okay yeah go ahead just just, just go back to um, I I remembered another stat Um, Liverpool have spent 173 million on Southampton players in the last four years and Southampton was just sold just for how much? Yeah. 200, for 200 million. <laughs> so, do, do Liverpool just set up like a direct debit with them and send them like a million a month? <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, just subscribe to Southampton players. <laughs> they, sh- they should have just bought the club. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bought the club, tear up the license. It's like it's like it's like uh, buying pubs in Ireland. You, you 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 buy one pub, then the second pub, then tear up the license, and then you own that village. You know. <laughs> As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast, or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Next up is uh, Crystal Palace versus Man City. Now, I, I haven't written any um, stats for this one because Palace are playing Arsenal tonight. You all know the result of that by the time this podcast comes out. Uh, so, look, uh, Martin, uh, I know obviously Palace haven't played, but... Yeah, no, uh, um, I think if Palace are going to get half a chance, are doing it, going to do anything in this game, they need Loftus Cheek to, to, to be on form, because I think he makes a big difference to them. But no, just looking at City, I just, well, I've got to run out of superlatives for them, to be honest. The last six at home uh, for Palace have been over two and a half, uh, three have been over three and a half, so I would suggest maybe backing over three and a half goals at 1.94. Um, and City have won 14 the last 15 meetings, and if you look at the last three, they've been 5 0, 5 0, 3 0. Um, so yeah, I can see, even with the rotation that's going to gonna be happening for City, um, they've got more than enough to win this game quite comfortably. And the problem is, they Palace like to try and play football, which are just play straight into City's hands, and yeah, um, easy win for City for me. Do you think Man City will be affected by a company getting injured again? Because um, they've got uh, Stones. While I was playing with the mask last night, um, companies cropped again. So they were playing Fernandinho at the centre back for a little while. Hmm. Um, oh, Stone, Stones back for the. Uh, he, he, I heard that he might make a quick return, but I, oh, I don't know. I think that's a bit optimistic. Hmm. Um, oh, and, you know, City have got, you know, the added fortune of Palace have to play tonight still as well. And then, you know, they've got a little bit more of a rest. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't think Palace have got the strength in depth to rotate as much as City and, and still cause a problem. We were you watching the match last night? Because Newcastle were, I, I thought, you know, the last 15 minutes, they had City on the ropes. Yeah, they did alright. First half was diabolical. Oh, yeah, I, brutal, turned, yeah. I, turned, I turned off after the first half, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Newcastle just didn't didn't want to do anything. No. Uh, I saw the way like, Gal dive when he tried to win a penalty with about 15 minutes mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, that caused. I, I was watching it at my mate's house, and yeah. when Gal went down, my mate went penalty, and I was like, B, hey, we didn't touch him. <laughs> and like, of course, the replay, and he's like, yeah, there's contact, but Gale dives the wrong way. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Clear dive, man. It's clear dive. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching here as well. A mate of mine is, is over, so he's a City fan. We were watching it, and uh, he kept giving out to me because I want—I I was wanting Newcastle to score. But the only reason was I—I I, I had—I put a fiver on both teams to score because I thought Newcastle were were good enough to get a goal last night. And uh, yeah, the last fifteen minutes, but it, it kind of showed that. Well, this is what I'm getting from watching City is that there are ways to get at them. You know, Southampton showed yeah, it, yeah. West Ham showed it. Uh, Donetsk showed it, and now uh, Newcastle have showed it as well. And, and I, I, maybe I'm giving Rafa too much praise here, but I think that was his game plan. His game plan was right. We'll, we'll sit as, uh, we'll, we'll have a high line, and we'll defend like hell. And maybe in the last yeah. 15 minutes, if it's going our way, then we can, then we can really go for it. And you know, they nearly got us. You know, and if they got a one-one yesterday, um, the, the papers would have been full of praise for Rafa. But yeah, yeah, true. I, I, th- I thought it was interesting how he went about it. You know, because um, something else I was looking up is that Rafa, is that Benitez and Guardiola haven't played a lot against each other. Only, only last season, I think, for managers who have, you know, uh, been around for for a good while now with top clubs. They they don't they haven't yeah. played against each other very much at all. Uh, so that's it for the Premier League. Uh, then let's have a look at the championship. There's only two matches from the championship that 
took our fancy. Um, seventh place Middlesbrough are taking on uh, eighth place uh, Aston Villa. So Tony Pulis has been named as the new manager. Gary Monk was fired. A stat I saw here was that there have been under 2.5 goals in 9 out of 12 Middlesbrough home matches and that sure as hell will not be stopping under Tony Pulis, baby. Um, <laughs> Dan, I know these you don't like these uh, D, D, DVDs. Um you're probably going for Middlesbrough win here, are you? Yeah, of course I am. But, um, <laughs> not just based on me hating uh, the mob from across the expressway, whose name I will not say out loud if I can help it. <laughs> um, Middlesbrough, they're, they're, they're not in bad form at the moment. They've um, one loss in four in the last four at home in the championship. Six wins in the last ten. They've not actually drawn since October, which is intriguing. Oh. Um, the other mob, um, who play in Claret and Blue, they've not won in five. Uh, the last couple of games they've, they've lost. They're slipping out of promotion places. And I tell you, like, I'm, I'm back in Birmingham this week. There's pressure on Steve Bruce right now. There's a lot, of, all the fans are turning on him again. Because they're fickle over there, you know, like, lose a couple of games and they'll whip you out. Oh. Um, and so the line's at 0.5, which basically means either Middlesbrough to win or that lot not to lose. And I, I looked, and, and Borough have won three of their last four games at home 2-0, uh, which I thought, and I thought, oh, you know, should I, should I go for 2-0? I thought, no. Nah. Uh, Borough, Borough to win at 1.97, that'll do me. Yeah, so, look, Dan... Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not too greedy. Dan, Dan <laughs> on that then, like, because I was looking this up as well, Middlesbrough have been all right, like, this season. They haven't been... Di- why, why did they get rid of Gary Monk? For, for uh, Pulis? Uh, like, you know? I think they, they spent a lot of money, didn't they? Is that it? Yeah, it's, it, it's something like that. Monk was seen as the weak link, and it's a shame, because I like Monk. Um, yeah. You know, he, I think he's a good manager. I'd like to have him at City. I can't see it happening, but I'd like it. Um... But Pulis, ugh. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Strange one. He might, he'll probably get him close to going up, but it'll be boring. Uh, I don't know if he will get them up, though. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's built for that kind of season. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, Martin, what do you think? Yeah, I was saying, saying Dan, really. Bar at 1.97 was a bit, a bit too much for me to ignore. Um, it's just new manager... New manager comes in, new impetus within the side. Uh, more often than not, they always seem to scrape a win on the first game. Um, and yeah, Dan took a, all my stats away from me, but yeah, just just reiterate exactly what Dan said with the fact that Borough are half decent at the minute and Villa, um, Villa aren't. They lost two one to Brentford. Um, on Boxing Day, and Ian Taylor, the ex-Villa midfielder, <laughs> come out and wrote a column. He was absolutely fuming with the centre midfields, just saying, look, we need need to strengthen in January in the middle of the park, otherwise we're going to finish mid-table. And, yeah, I agree with him. I, I, I just saw the highlights of that game, and, and Villa weren't great. Um, and they got Bristol City after this as well. So if they lose to Borough and, and lose to Bristol City, they could well find themselves struggling to to keep pace at the top, which isn't isn't really good for a for a side that's expected to be in the Premier League. And yeah, as I said on the transfers as well, I think the reason why Monk did go is that yeah, we we, we sold uh, we being West Ham sold Darren Randolph to them and Ashley Fletcher to them for a combined total of twelve and a half million. They signed Martin Braithwaite for 10 million, British Summer Longer for 15 million. Um, so yeah, they spent a lot of money in the summer. Um, so I think the, uh, what's the, is it Steve Gibson? The, the yeah, team? it's it. It's Steve uh, Gibson. Yeah, I think he's hoping that Pulis will work his magic and, and get and bounce straight back to the Premier League because as we all know, if you don't go up the first season and you go down, then it's never easy to, to come back after that. Well, as I always do, um, this, this is actually a tip to, like, people who are listening. If you, if you want to know what's going on with the club, read the fans' message board, see what they say. If they're confident, then maybe, you know, they've got a reason for it. If they're not confident, then they've probably got a reason for that too. Look at what consensus opinion is. And, uh, the Claret and Blue Mob's message board, it's all saying, uh, middle for a week. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's so many of them, all, so, so many of them saying, Bruce can't buy a win. P45 at the, end of, at the end of the game. So it has, like, a month ago, there were top four, <laughs> and everything was rosy. Like, now they're, like, out of the 
playoff spaces and they want him sacked. Unreal. The, the problem, that, the problem that they have is up front. They don't have any fit strike. Well, they're playing Scott Hogan up front at the moment. And Scott Hogan scored, I mean, three times since he signed from Brentford. It's just been dreadful. And you look at their team, and it's not that great. Um, you know, the, they are struggling a little bit in midfield. They're definitely struggling up front to, um, mm-hmm. to create chances. And they're getting picked off. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's, 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 it, speaking from a personal point of view, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then, then I watch my own team and I remember just how bad we are. Like, oh, yeah. Can you lads? John Terry, player manager. You yeah. heard of her first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you'd really hate them. I think he's a perfect fit for them. I really do. <laughs> I, I truly, truly detest John Terry. <laughs> Harry Red, oh, no. John Terry, player manager, Harry Redknapp, director of football. That just cut me off. That just cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, lads. You heard it here first. Dan, Dan has predicted a couple of these managers, so you know. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I didn't get Swansea right. That one came a bit out of the blue. Nah, so that's, that's just a mental decision. So it is. Uh, could have been. Anyway, look. Uh, we no time here. Um, we'll. Uh, you, Martin, for uh, Bristol and Wolves next. So, second place Bristol are at home to Wolves. Uh, what do you think, Martin? Yeah. This is going to be a great game, isn't it? It's going to be a great, cr- absolute cracker. I mean, three all in the reverse fixture. Um, a lot of people saying that was game of the season as well, and I think it was. Um, I've gone down the middle, gone for the draw. I think Bristol City are decent at the minute, and obviously Wolves are flying. I can't. Can't really separate either side. And just looking at the team news, the fact that Nathan Baker and Jamie Patterson are doubtful with Hammy's hamstring injuries for Bristol City, that could be a big loss. But then Wolves might be missing Cavalero and uh, Bowley. So if either of those miss out as well, um, it's going to be very tough. But yeah, I, I honestly can't separate the two sides. So honestly, think three point two eight for the draw is pretty good value. Well done. I like that. I like that bet because Martin's right. You look at you look at how both teams are playing. First versus second. So second. So City uh, not lost in what uh, seven uh, championship uh, seven games in total. Six mm-hmm. in the championship. Wolves not lost in, I think it's eight, uh, no, it's ten. It's ten there. Yeah. So, you know, both, both teams are winning games. Um, what's interesting though is Wolves are keeping clean sheets now. Um, okay, so they conceded two to Millwall, but, um, before that, they'd kept four consecutive clean sheets. Club record that was. Yeah, four wins with, um, yeah, four consecutive clean sheets. It, it, it was, uh, you know, and, and like they beat us by one. Birmingham City by a goal to nil. Uh, Drew Sunderland beat Sheffield Wednesday a goal to nil. Ipswich goal to nil. So they're grinding out the results. Um, Bristol City are only winning by uh, the odd goal as well. If you look at their last few games, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. Drew 1-1, beat Reading 2-0. So it's going to be close. And I do like I, I do like the idea of a draw in this game. Um, a 3.29. It's maybe not worth a huge punt, but I would back it. That's why I would go for two. Okay. Very good. Um, Martin, you wanted to, uh, you, you, you nominated the Old Farm Derby. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't, you know, you can't dismiss the Old Farm Derby whenever it's on, can you? But, um, I so know, it, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> But granted, they aren't as amazing as they have been in the past because obviously Rangers aren't as good at the moment. But Celtic will probably win the game. But I like the look of both teams to score at 1.83 purely because uh, Rangers have only been able to score once away in the SPL in 2017. So they, you know, they're normally good for a goal and Celtic are obviously going to score at least one. So I think I think that's pretty good value there. Um, but it depends on what Rangers are going to turn up. You know, they beat Motherwell the you other know, day 2 0, but then then they lose lose to Kilmarnock, they lose to St Johnston and then, you know, they they go and beat Hibs away as well before that. Um I think they'll I think they'll be fired up for it. Who you know you're at the wrong club if you're not fired up for a game like this. But <laughs> yeah, both teams to score looks pretty decent for me. Good stuff. Uh, you would not understand Dan, had you? 
No, so. no, it's, it's a game I hate, um, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to uh, dignify it with my time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've, 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 I've spoke to Paddy about this before. I, I, the whole, um, I, I like, I, I like derby games. I like proper. Um, Blood and Thunder derby games, but mm. Radio Celtic is just a racial, it's just bigotry. Mm. Just sectarianism, and I want yeah. nothing to do with it. So. The only yeah. thing uh, I like I, I think Scotland would be better. Yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. Scotland would be what? I was just going to I think Scotland would be better off without both teams. <laughs> and they're going to get their backsides handed to them in England. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the only thing I like about... I I, 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 I I used to watch Celtic and Rangers a lot growing up because Celtic are very popular in Ireland. And I remember there was one match mm. in St. Paddy's Day one year and uh, I think it was the match where Gaza played the pipe and that, that drove that drove people mental in Ireland it was I, but I thought it was the funniest thing ever so some people were never really a, a thing for me um, uh, there is a funny story though I know if you know that the band Mogwai the post rock band they um, they're all Celtic fans and uh, uh, at, a, at an old firm derby one time they saw a flag uh, calling Rangers uh, Scotland shame so they wrote a song about it which is quite good if you have any betting questions you'd like to ask don't be shy Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. Protipster I R L, Protipster E N, or Protipster D A N, or on Facebook at Protipster UK. There's a couple of matches I picked out from Syria. Uh, Fiorentina in eight are taking on AC Milan. I just wanted to mention this one because poor AC Milan, they're in free fall, aren't they? It's all going wrong. They did they enter midweek today? Eh? Uh, in yes, the Copa in yesterday? extra time, yeah, 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 yesterday, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Those trigger days, but um, yeah, I mean they are in free fall. Um, it's it's sad to see, really, because you know I do I do like AC Milan as a neutral um, in in Serie A, but Fiorentina, uh, you know they're not they're not doing that. Great. They're not scoring many goals, are they? Nil mm. nil um, against Napoli, nil nil against Genoa, late goal against Cagliari away from home, scraped a one nil win there. Um, so I can potentially see this being a one nil either way. So I reckon both teams to score no. At 1.93 is is pretty good value. Ah, yeah, smart way looking at it. Dan. Did you pick out in here? Um, I I might have stole most of what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> I was I was just looking through Fiorentina's recent matches. They've drawn a lot for the last six in Serie A. Mm. And okay, so they lot uh, they drew with Genoa, uh, Genoa uh, but. At home, they do win games, you know, that they beat Udinese 3-0, 3-0, Sassuolo 3-0, lost to Roma 4-2. Milan, um, I, I don't know what's going on with Milan. One win in the last five games, it's, it's uh, against Bologna. You know, Drew with Torino, um, there was the Benevento goal where the goalkeeper scored. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. But losing, losing to Hellas Verona 3-0, what the hell? You know, um, I, I, the thing is, I was going to say, a lot of the Milan players are probably scared to do anything wrong because of Gattuso. <laughs> Gattuso <laughs> yeah. Just threatening to, to cut yeah. their head off or something. <laughs> but Fiorentina, 2.07 to win, looks to me like it actually might be value because although they do draw a lot at home, they do win games and they do score goals. It's only Genoa they didn't. Mm. Whereas Milan haven't scored in... Two games, they've only scored, uh, what, uh, four goals in the last five games in total. They're away form, the, 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 uh, lost, uh, sorry, lost two of the last three, um, Napoli, Benevento, the Drew, uh, Hellas Verona. And, okay, yeah. you know, it, it's, there's something clearly not right there. That was weird, that game, because they smashed them in the cup, and that three, I think, mm. as well. And then, obviously, they played them straight away in the league and got hammered. Mm. Weird so, one. Yeah. Very strange. But that, that's one going for Fiorentina. <laughs> All right, good one. Uh, so the last one, then, is uh, third place Inter are taking on uh, fifth place uh, Lazio. What stats did I find here? Yeah, there have been over 2.5 goals in 14 out of 20 uh, Inter home matches and in 10 out of 10 Lazio away matches. Also, Lazio have drawn the first half in 11 out of 18 away matches. Uh, Dan, we'll start with you here. Okay, so Inter... Um, we had, we had this argument, didn't we, about Inter not being, uh, Inter being 
the, the, the club in Milan not to support. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But I've always preferred Inter to Milan for some reason. Oh, um, that's because you're a fascist you guy. The, uh, <laughs> don't even. Don't even <laughs> Inter aren't playing well at the moment either. Like, okay, so mm-hmm. Drew, 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 Juve away, fair enough. But, like, losing at home to Udinese, losing away to Sassuolo, um, is not great. Um, and you look at their home form, um, the, like, the, the lost to Udinese was their first loss at home this season. Yeah. So, is it a blip? Maybe. Um, Lazio, on the other hand. See, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know enough about Italian football. Uh, I'm just looking at statistics. And like, I see Lazio like had a big win against Crotone, but Crotone bottom three, drew three all with Atalanta away, uh, lost, lost to Torino at home. I didn't realise Tor- yeah, Tor- Torino aren't that great, are they? No. And it, it's just, it's not inspiring. It's not inspiring me to back Lazio. And although, yeah, um, Internazionale had a, a bit of a, a blip, 2.24 to beat Lazio. Fancy that. Maybe only small bet, but I fancy it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, it's a tough one to call. I mean, I've not really gone for anything yet, but I think if I would go for something, I'd probably go for the draw, 3.50. Um, like Dan said, Inter are having a bit of a blip around. I mean, two weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, they were at the top of the league, yeah. un- unbeaten all season, and now they've gone and got one goal in the last five games. They've lost the last three in all competitions. Um, it is it is a blip, but it's potentially starting to be a bit more than that. And Inter fans are starting to get on the uh, coach's back, who's it, Spalletti? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't think Inter have won anything for a few years, so they always seem to start well. I remember like a couple of years ago, they started well under Mancini. Yeah, um, yeah. One at four or five in a row, and then all of a sudden fell away. Um, just seems to be the same old Inter. It's it, it basically the Arsenal of Italian football. <laughs> it starts so well, and then always fall away and end up being like fifth or sixth. Um, and looking at Lazio, they've only failed to score once in the last 24 games, averaging two and a half goals a game. So, with that in mind, I expect Lazio to score. Um, so yeah, I can see, I can see it being potentially a one-all draw. So, a, a, a draw will be the bet for me. All right, good stuff. So that's all our matches then. Um, they just have, uh, I probably sent it too late to The Guardian, uh, a couple of days ago, they put out their top 100 best footballers. So I'll give you the top I did 10. Have a look, yeah. You had a look, yeah. So number 10, I'll, I'll, I'll just run down the top 10. Eden Hazard, 10, 9th, Tony Cruz, and uh, mm-hmm. Mbappe is number 8, Robert Lewandowski with that horrible grey haircut, the 7th, <laughs> uh, what's that, uh, Gail from Carnation Street, the 6th, Luka Modric, <laughs> number 5, Harry Kane, 4, Kevin De Bruyne and Neymar, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi make up the top 10. Is there anything there, lads, that you wouldn't agree with or someone is missing? Um, well, probably not, to be honest. I, I mean, just looking a little bit further down this, it's going 12th. I was a little bit surprised to see him so high up. And Suarez, 15th. I was a little bit surprised to see him so far down. I thought he might make the top 10. Mm. Um no room in the top 100 for the richest defender in the world. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I, there's not much wrong with that list, to be honest, in my opinion, just looking at the top 100. Um, there's a few players you can argue you should be up and down, but I can't, nothing, no one sticks out for me. I'm like, I'm looking at him thinking, why on earth is he, he like 20 places further down, or there's no one that jumps out. It all looks. Half decent. Well, I don't know who was on the panel, but um, 169 experts all agreed on this, didn't they? Yeah. 63 nations. How do you come to those kind of agreements between so many people, though? <laughs> Right. That's, a good, that's a good question I I, I'm looking at it as well and the only one man you, you won't like me for this at all but I, I wouldn't have Harry Kane as high as five I just couldn't I think he's good but I don't think he's that good I think I, I, I'm I, see I'm I, I know I shouldn't be but I'm I'm still sure that he's going to get figured out 
you know, because there's, 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 maybe it's just something about the way he plays that it's like, uh, th- 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 like people haven't figured him out yet, but when they figure him out, th- then then it's game over. Yeah. But maybe as, a, as, a Ham, as a West Ham fan, I've been hoping that, <laughs> that someone would figure him out for the last couple of years, but it's not happening. He's just yeah. he's breaking all sorts of records now. Um, that calendar year thing, I don't even know why the calendar year thing is a thing. Oh, it's it is. ridiculous, um, isn't it? It's the worst that yeah. calendar oh, years. Like. Near, uh, yeah, it's nowhere near the ninety. What was it? Ninety-one goals. <laughs> Messi scored one year. Um, he, he's 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 world class. There's no denying the fact that he's world class. And I personally think Spurs might not win anything this year, and they'll move to the new stadium. And if they don't win anything, then he he could well be snapped up by somebody. Yeah, because he can't, he can't like want to. See, who the hell is typing like mad? Uh, <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Me. <laughs> um, it's got to be hard to keep him, isn't it, Kane? Because the big boys are yeah. going to come in and ah. I mean, his Spurs have a wage cap as well, and Levy doesn't like going anywhere near that. So I think Harry Kane's on about one. Was it on one twenty a week? He'll, he'll want more than that soon. Yeah. <laughs> Surely. Yeah, we, we were talking about. I, I was talking about this with my mate because um, he's not on uh, anything comparable to like other players of his caliber in the Premier League. Yeah, and I don't know what it is about Spurs, but like every three months I seem to hear Harry Kane signed a new deal, Daddy Ali signed a new deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's like they just like tag on an extra year or bump it up an extra ten k. Mm. And I do wonder. I do wonder when Harry Kane. Reaches the point of like, well, I think I've done everything I can here at Spurs. It's time for me to um, play for a team that wins trophies. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, was that yeah. a harsh on Spurs fans? I don't. Know. <laughs> I'm not agree with that. When was last time Spurs won a trophy? Harry Kane, you know, to be a world great, you need to have trophies under your belt. Yeah. He needs to start winning something soon. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't and I don't think he's going to get that with Spurs. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just another Matt Latissia, like you know, as good and all as he was, he never won it. You know, and he could have, he could have won so much. It's the same with Harry Kane. It's like, ah, come on, win something or else go. Like, I don't see him going anywhere in England. He'll have to go far and go to Spain or. Oh, I don't know. You not see him going to like a city or someone like that? Like they might pay them no. the bucks. No, I, I don't think he'd do it. I think he'd go abroad. It's a shame because I do. There's part of me that really wants to see if he can break Shearer's record. Um, but yeah. I'm probably with you guys actually that he, if he does move, it will be abroad. Mm. Uh, but then you got to think of family. He's got, he's he's got a kid now, right? Um, so it's whether they want to move abroad and stuff like that. Really, yeah, so yeah. A lot of it'd be so terrible. Consider. It'd be so terrible if the child spoke an, an extra language, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, yeah, well, yeah, true. No, but you, you don't know what the other half's going to be. The other half might have a phobia of going abroad or something. You just don't know. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't know um, some Spanish people there. <laughs> <laughs> Good God! Actually, Did one you would just say Harry Kane's wife is or Harry Kane's partner's racist. No, 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 no. I said she's xenophobic. Mm-hmm. It's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> um, come here. Uh, you posted this up as well. While we're on this kind of subject, um, uh, of 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 of. English English lads going uh, foreign. Uh, one of the, one of the West Ham boys, he's on loan in Germany. He's signed a permanent deal, Martin, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, well, I don't know if he's actually. Uh, oh, I don't know if it's been um, announced yet or not. But yeah, Reece Oxford, um, nineteen years old. I think he only turned nineteen like last week or something. Um, looks like he's going to RB. Like I won't spell it out. RB Leipzig. Um, <laughs> It's a strange one for me. Moyes, Moyes has come out like a few days ago and he said, uh, got asked about the transfer window and he said, yeah, I think we've got too many forwards and I think we're a little bit short in the middle of the park. We've got a potential wonder kid on loan trying to learn his trade in Germany, defensive midfielder, which is what Moyes is looking at. And yet it looks as though we're going to sell him for probably 8 million up front with an extra 10 million based on what he does in the future, I think. But I can't, I can't get my head around it. Um, unless there's something between the lines. I don't know, you know, is he a, is he a bit of an arse to, to work with? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, it's a lot of money for a, for a German club to pay though. German German clubs are non non no, like, and stingy. Like Leipzig are full of money, aren't they? Oh, yeah, 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 they, yeah, they, yeah. they 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 splash it out of it. 
I'm going to quote this for you, Martin, about it from a West Ham fan. If we, um, if we flop Rhys Oxford off for 90 million euros to fund a 25 million pound move for Alfie Mawson, then we need to dig up that academy football turf from outside our dugout and bump yeah. it in the Thames. <laughs> yeah, completely, agree. completely agree. Everyone says that we're the academy of football still, but no one's coming through, and yet the chance we've got to bring this, this kid through, not he, it's annoying because Billich brought him through like a couple of seasons ago. He was amazing for the first few games, and then he kind of had to sit out a few games and didn't find his way back into the side. Um, I thought he was going to shine then, but I thought going on loan to Borussia Mönchengladbach um, for half a season. I think the actual loan was a whole season, but um, yeah, learn his trade out there, play a few first team games. He's actually played really well the last few games in Germany. Um, and I thought he'd come back and then we'd give him a give him a run next season, but it's very sad to see if he does go. Although at the moment I think it is just rumour. Um, there's no confirmation yet. Hopefully Moyes is reading Twitter right now thinking, Oh, what am I doing? But it wouldn't surprise me if it's a if it's a Golden Sullivan thing either. Uh, maybe so. But you know, on the other hand I, I think more English and Irish players as well, you can lump into this. More of them should go abroad. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 you know, yeah. just, yeah, just I learn agree. more. I agree know? completely. Yeah, same. Just, just definitely, cause. Uh, have, all, have the Irish guys got any one out of Britain? Yeah, no, I think there's, there's, yeah. there's, there was, uh, there was someone over, I know, but he's back. He was playing for Man, uh, who was he? Uh, he was a Man City player. I think he's been sold to Blackburn. He had a couple of seasons in the Dutch league. Then he came back to City and City flogged him to Blackburn. God, I don't remember his name. Oh, that's the yeah, yeah. There's probably a couple more as well, but I think, uh, you know, just, just kind of broaden your horizons a bit. Travel for a year or two, play football abroad and come back better. But anyway, look, lads, that's it. Is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap up? No. So uh, just give really. us your, uh, give us your, your social media stuff then, please, uh, Martin. Yeah, if you want to find me on Twitter, you can at ProTips.M and on Facebook at ProTips the Martin, three separate words. Nice Come and say hi. Good nice stuff. And Dan, where are you? Uh, ProTips to Dan on Twitter, ProTips to Dan on Facebook, all one word. Um, yeah, come and say hi. Don't give me too much abuse. Um, I'm still hungover from Christmas. Please, <laughs> please, please be gentle on me. <laughs> stuff. And of course, you can get me at Pro tipster pod right look thanks everyone for listening of course you can listen to us on uh, on iTunes we're on Android podcatchers and we're on YouTube and we're on the pro tipster blog as well make sure and check out protipster.com some of the best football tips you'll find on the internet and subscribe to us on those various platforms as well because we're awesome and we like doing these things for you as well right we'll be back actually I haven't a clue when we're going to be back because the bank holiday is on Monday will we be recording Monday we probably won't so maybe we'll be back on Tuesday Um, yeah we'll let you know on Twitter anyway alright good luck enjoy the football and happy new year thanks for listening everybody don't forget to check out protipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips check us out on YouTube and Instagram our handles there are protipsterglobal or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.